um, it was stressful. It was stressful. I think, uh, you know, for the months leading up to the trials, you know, I found myself thinking about it and the consequences of it um, and just, you know, gritting my teeth and holding my breath. Like, you know, I could be driving my car and be at a stoplight and, um, and find myself holding my breath and gritting my teeth, you know, and squeezing <laughs> the steering wheel and, you know, and just, ah, oh, you know, relax, relax. It's, you know, that kind of thing. You are listening to Spartan Combat on Spartan Up. Learn from battle-tested combat athletes with your host, Ryan Warner. Spartans! Welcome back to the combat series. Our guest today is Kendall Cross, a 1996 Olympic gold medalist in wrestling. And it's fitting that we have Kendall on as the Olympic wrestling trials are going on today in Fort Worth, Texas. Kendall shares an inside look at what the athletes are going through as they try to complete a lifelong goal. Enjoy. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Orgain. Clean nutrition to help you stay healthy, active, and feeling your best. New subscribers save 30% at orgain.com slash pages slash Spartan. Kendall Cross, Mustang, Oklahoma. How we doing? Uh, doing great, man. Got a huge couple of days coming up. Yes, we do. Olympic trials are tomorrow. Kendall and I are both down in Texas gearing up uh, for the big event that starts tomorrow. Kendall, I got to imagine that, you know, just the word Olympic trials brings a, a chill to the bone or an excitement. You know, what is it, uh, what comes to mind when you think back to your Olympic trials experience? Uh, you know, uh, immediately, like first thing, if I could put it in one word, which I do, um, it was stressful. It was stressful. I think, uh, you know, for the months leading up to the trials, you know, I found myself thinking about it and the consequences of it um, and just, you know, gritting my teeth and holding my breath. Like, you know, I could be driving my car and be at a stoplight and, um, and find myself holding my breath and gritting my teeth, you know, and squeezing <laughs> the steering wheel and, you know, and just, oh, you know, relax, relax. It's, you know, that kind of thing. So it's, a, it's, um, I know for these guys, it's, uh, super stressful. It's just, it's a defining moment that, that you, uh, just, it's, it's hard to put into perspective when you most need to put in it into perspective. And, um, yeah, I, I feel for them. I feel for all of them. What was, uh, in, in a lot of people you remember you from 96, but obviously you made it in 92 as well. What was uh, higher on the stress scale for you, repeating or your first go? The uh, repeating, you know, um, the, yeah, the 96 Olympic trials were definitely, well, I knew that they were going to be my last one. And, um, you know, the 92 team to compare it, 92, man, I, I really, I went into the trials um, just, you know, thinking, you know what, this, uh, you know, my year is 96. And I knew it in my head, like when just preparedness, you know, just that, that piece alone, uh, I, I was, was going to be most prepared with another four years of experience and wisdom and all that goes with that. And um, so the 92s, 92 Olympic trials were, I had Brad Penrith in front of me who had just won a world silver medal. So he was coming off the 91 world's you know world silver medal and um i really wasn't supposed to beat him and um i kind of took that i took that attitude in there like hey man let's let it fly let's see what happens but 96 was different in, in that um man i knew it was my last chance and so yeah, I, I would call it completely different yeah, I can imagine. I mean, everyone says repeating or defending is is that much harder. And and you would know because like in between those years, it wasn't like you were just, you know, running through it. 93, 94, 95. I think you said in the Terry film that I don't know if you made a world team in between then. So I do not. I do I mean, not. I've never made a world team, Ryan. I, ever? Uh, I, no, I, I um, tried out seven years and made two teams. And they were the, the Olympic year and, um, you know, the ultimate Saturday nighter. <laughs> <laughs> I 
How does it compare to the Olympics? Like, is it that once you're there, it's kind of like, all right, I'm here. Or do you refocus and put that same kind of pressure on yourself to do well at the games as well? Well, at the Olympics, you know, I, uh, the first one uh, that I went to in 92 is, um, my attitude was, mm, let's just see, you know, I didn't really know. I hadn't really been tested. Um, I'd only been to, a, you know, a, a handful of international competitions. Um, and so it was, uh, it was just like, hey, let's see where we are. Mm-hmm. And then um, in 96, uh, you know, after getting through Terry Brands and the trials, I really had, I had this amazing amount of confidence and, and peace with what I had just done and my thoughts. And, and, and I directed my thoughts to the idea that nobody's going to beat me. I just beat Terry Brands three times out of four matches, you know, with the U S open and the trials, who's going to beat me. I just couldn't even see, uh, losing. In, in the 92, were you in the finals as well, or do you have to come through the ladder to get to Penrith? In the 92s, so Penrith, because he was a world medalist, he sat out to the final two out of three. And I had to go through, this is crazy, the 92s were a trip, because um, I had to go through the U.S. Open, and then there was a trials that where you go through the mini, the, the challenge tournament winner wrestles the number three guy two out of three. <laughs> and then that winner goes and wrestles the number two guy two out of three and then that winner wrestles the number one guy from the u.s open two out of three all at the same tournament or like weeks in advance no it well it was a it was a uh it was started on a wednesday and ended like on a saturday oh my so God. mini tournament um best of three against the third, you know, the third rank guy, best of three against the second rank guy, best of three against the first rank guy. And then you go to the final trial, which was against Brad Penrith, who was sitting there waiting for whoever was going to come through. And so I came through that. Wow. And, uh, but, but it was different weeks. It was, I want to say there were two, two week two weeks in between something to that effect. Um, and then I went and wrestled, um, Brad Penrith. So when you got to Pittsburgh, you only had to wrestle Penrith or do you have one of those other ones before that? Yes, Penrith. Oh, wow. It was a okay. true two out of three event where we both uh, made weight. And so just in terms of what we had to deal with to get there, um, we were both, you know, rested and, you know, had weighed in the same time. And so there were no, you know, hidden advantages. Yeah. That's a and big I, thing. I, Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, in fact, I, I actually thought that I, and, and I told myself this, dude, I had the advantage of um, wrestling the U S open and the trials to get to this final trial. And I just had this momentum. It's like, dude, I'm wrestling good right now. Let's just keep, you know, keep going, you know? So I had that attitude. And as you're saying this, I'm thinking back to the last time we talked and it was for the John Smith documentary, but knowing that, um, John Fisher beat John Smith in that first match, but knowing he had to wrestle a couple weeks ahead of time, kind of like you, it, it makes sense that he was maybe a little more fresh because he was, he was really in the thick of things. And as we know from the documentary, John was going through a number of things, staff and just a lot of issues. But um, so you felt to kind of help you get a little rhythm going, going, going a couple yeah, weeks ahead. Yeah, it, it helped me. And, and I told myself it helped me. I think that's an important piece of it. You know um, I think one, one thing that happened with that team that that 91 team because the 91 world team member sat out and was guaranteed a two out of three in the 92 trials and they knew going into the 91 year we all knew Mm -hmm. so it was all about making that 91 team right but you know I think some of the guys I don't know that it was the healthiest thing for all those guys in fact most of them they didn't wrestle real well at the trials you know and John you know specifically you know he's he uh had a rough go um i think they all did and then brad was the only casualty the the rest of the team made it um so and now this year i really like how they're giving the guys who win the bracket on friday an extra day because you think about a guy like kyle dake who he has to come down a weight and he doesn't get to go to the finals but he still has to beat Burroughs. It's like, I really don't think it's fair to have those matches the same day. So at least they're splitting it up 
um, one day because if Kyle wins tomorrow, uh, he has a whole day to recoup and get ready for JB. Um, let's talk about some of the matchups a little bit, though. I mean, Kyle Dake, Jordan Burroughs. Can you remember a time when, when two, uh, you know, multiple world championships are going at it for the same Olympic spot? Yeah, I want to say it's been since my era. Yeah. I mean, those were those were the days when this kind of thing happened. And so we've had a, you know, a bit of a lull in that kind of um, stiff competition to make a team. Um, I mean, there, yeah, there are exceptions, but, you know, these stand out. But think about, like, Dake's a two-time world champ. Barrels is a four-time world champ. I just can't believe that, that they're going at it. I mean, that one of them's not going to get to go and – for JB, it's obvious, obviously his last go. For Dake, he might have one more in him. But, um, man, it's just a, one of the biggest matches that, that I can remember. Um, when you look at this matchup, knowing that it's really a polarization of styles, what, what do you get excited for and what positions are you going to be watching for? I don't know that I'll be watching for positions or anything. You know, it'll be really cool to see how they do manage the the, the space that they're in, you know, that – the mat, the clock, um, how they, um, when they are aggressive, when they're not, you know, um, I'm, I'm really, it's interesting. I don't have to necessarily, I just get to enjoy watching whatever they do, but I do pay attention to how they manage the clock, the mat. Um, you know, Kyle Dake is a master at that and Jordan Burroughs you can't say he's not a master at it it's just going to be really I'm going to I'm really going to enjoy it and and just be able to sit back and you know one thing Ryan you know I've been through it Mm -hmm. and so I know how these guys feel I know what they're going through um it's it's really good it's going to be quite a a scene just to um see who comes through you know I I uh I can't believe that one of those guys won't be in the Olympics. <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. No, it and really doesn't. It's, it's such a, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bad deal. You know, I'm a, I'm a huge Jordan Burroughs fan. I want him to be in this Olympics, but we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. And it's, I don't, I mean, no one knows it's, if you had to make a, a Vegas line, I don't even know who would be favored. I mean, the king is the king until he's dethroned, but he's lost a couple this year. Dake's been wrestling. Dake hasn't lost a match in like three years, maybe. So it's just every you couldn't ask for a better matchup. Um, you can't, and it's like a, you know the king is the king, but man, here's this guy, and he has these other reasons for why he's the guy, you know, and they're very very different reasons. Mm-hmm. The king is the king, you know. He is. I know. And it's like people say you, you stay with him until proven otherwise. And he's one and seven or he's seven and one against Kyle. You know, the last time they wrestled was 2017. Um, it was a best of three series. Kyle won match one and match two. Kyle was winning with 30 seconds left. JB does what he does. Got match two and then match three. He kind of, he, he also won. I, I don't remember the exact score, but um, obviously a lot's changed since then. And, and Kyle Day, kind of along with David Taylor, have settled into their own weights and have emerged as as new stars. And they're known throughout the world, not just the United States. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. And you know, just two weights above it, we get another super match. Um, you know, the great Kyle Snyder versus the great Jaden Cox. I don't think Jaden's lost a match in probably the same time Kyle. It's probably been two or three years. Um, whereas Snyder's dropped a few as of late. Um, and I'm thinking back to the last world championships, but, um, yeah, I mean, what about this one? Just would love to hear your thoughts on, on, on this matchup as well. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting just because, well, again, I just go back to this. We're going to see one of those guys, Kyle Snyder or Jaden Cox, not be going to the Olympics. I just, I can't get over that. You know, those guys, you know, it's just such a, what a, I don't know if it's a travesty, you know, it's, just, it's what it is. Yeah. Um, but it's just a shame, you know, I, you know, but getting over that, 
man, it's going to be really, it's, it's such an interesting uh, conflict of styles. You know, Cox is just loose and carefree and active and technical and fast. And is there, am I leaving anything out? You know, <laughs> um, he doesn't get scored he's on. Creative. He's creative. He, um, he will do, you know, what feels right versus what he's, you know, drilled over and over. And then you've got Kyle Snyder, who, you know, in my opinion, he uh, has drilled over and over and he knows his stuff and he goes to it and forces it. You know, one one, um, you know, type of world champion or Olympic champion, you know, uh, world champions, Olympic champions, they, you know, they're, they're kind of there are two sets of them. You can categorize them if you want. And there's the one who just. uh who's free and easy, the Vesa Saitio yes. um, type of wrestler who just goes out and crafts his match. And then there's the guy who has one or two things that they do really well and they force it on their opponent. And so we've got one, you know. Kendall Cross, I really appreciate your time, sir. We're less than 24 out. I cannot believe it. And uh, go Team USA, baby. You bet, man. Take care, buddy. Take care. See ya. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Orgain. Clean nutrition to help you stay healthy, active, and feeling your best. New subscribers save 30% at orgain.com slash pages slash Spartan. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Combat Series on Spartan Up Podcast. Spartan Up is your partner in resilience for mind, body, and spirit. We're here three days every week. Tuesdays, you can find Joe DeSena, founder and CEO of Spartan, interviewing biohackers, business leaders, authors, and athletes. Thursdays and Saturdays, catch episodes from our DECA, Endurance, Trail, Combat, and LaRuta series. Do you know someone who needs a little nudge? Maybe they could use some motivation, tactics, to be stronger, healthier, happier, more successful. Tell them about our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment. We want to know who's watching and who's listening. Thanks. See you next time.